All right. So uh, you guys are incredibly successful <coughs> entrepreneurs uh, elsewhere and in gaming, serial entrepreneurs, build incredible businesses, in particular in games. I'm glad to see the stage is big enough for both of you at the moment. But <laughs> you, you've literally started working together in a more formal capacity just a couple of weeks back. How has your, uh, your work together started? You're clearly, body language seems to be warm. You guys haven't beaten each other up yet. So how does it feel? Uh, uh, I, I think it feels, feels very good. So uh, obviously, like, uh, we've known each other for a while now. And, uh, and I, I, like, uh, now that we can formal, sort of formalize the relationship, uh, it, I, I think, in a sense, like, almost nothing has changed. So uh, our partnership with Gang Ho has uh, continued as, as, as planned. We've doing more and more collaboration, cross-promotion, and, and all that stuff, type of stuff. But uh, of course, it, it feels very good. Okay. Um, so far, so good. Um, I'm so excited to work with the Lutka and the Supercell teams because uh, they are the, one of the best team in the world. So I'm, I learn a lot from them. And also, sometimes I'm, I, I, I can share uh, some know-how. For example, uh, of course, we, we know the Asian market. So we introduce their titles to, through our applications, games, uh, to, 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 to the Asian people. And uh, it, the result was amazing. So I'm, we are very satisfied with the, the collaboration with each other. That's great. And can you talk a little bit more about if you like the model of how you work together, because it certainly sounds like it really is about sharing and collaboration. Um, but the, the deal structure really was one of ultimately SoftBank purchasing, if you like, a controlling interest in, in, in Supercell. Does that mean that SoftBank effectively runs Supercell now, or how, do you, how does it actually work? Um, I'd like to tell you uh, the SoftBank's good tradition. Um, SoftBank has over 1,000 uh, group companies. But uh, we, SoftBank never uh, control uh, the, the, those com group companies. Uh, the, we totally uh, respect and appreciate uh, the original management team and the founders. So uh, if they like to, uh, if they want help, then we are very happy to help. Uh, they, if we find a good idea to support them, and I, we will ask sincerely, then if, if they really want it, and then uh, we will give some help in hand. So that is a basic uh, attitude to the group invested company. And uh, uh, so that's why uh, we, we can manage over 1,000 group investment companies. It, it, it is quite a unique deal structure as a whole, right? It gives founders almost complete control of this, of the, of the, if you like, of the entity moving forward. Yeah, um, actually, the Iluka and founders or management teams are really excellent. So we, we, do, we, we, ha we don't have to do anything about uh, uh, the the managing the super cell. So um, um, if, if, if you fail, uh, you, you might feel uh, that it's, it's kind of unique, but for us, uh, it's very natural. Hmm. Yeah, like, like to add, add to that, like from our perspective, it, it cer certainly feels like that we, we the uh, Supercell is even more independent like mm. after the deal than, than it was before that, and, and mainly because we kind of, we, we extremely long-term view that, that uh, uh, Taiso and, and, and the team at SoftBank brings into the table. So uh, as you guys know, I mean, these guys have like completely redefined what long-term means in the <laughs> business life. So for us, it used to be like five to 10 years, and now it's apparently 300 years. So, yeah. so uh, trying to learn from these guys every single day. Yeah, that, that's great. And, and I, I actually think it, it's interesting that focus in the press has been so much about the present, in that the deal got done, and you, know, you, you guys have started working together. Um, can you talk a little bit more about the, f the future though? Like how do you, does this change anything in terms of either company's plan? Because clearly Gung Ho has been incredibly successful in Japan with a you know, title that's grossing over a billion dollars this year, which is incredible. Yeah, and of course, Clash of Clans has been moderately successful too, globally. Um, does it actually change your plans, if you like, independently as operating companies uh, moving forward? Um, in my opinion, uh, each company has a good tradition, a good corporate culture, so we don't have to change uh, anything at all. So each, each company sh uh, should uh, stand alone independently, and, uh, uh, but uh, like a f uh, closer friends, 
uh, the, if, if we find a good synergy, then we will cooperate. But mainly, uh, the basically, uh, the, they, they work independently. So that is uh, what I'm thinking. Anything to add? Has Supercell changed its long-term view? Do you now have a 300 plan also? 300 year plan? Uh, we, are, we are working on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I think that's right what Tyson just said. So, um, and, and there really hasn't been any, any change. So even before the deal, we had a, quite an extensive plan to collaborate you know, between Puzzle and Dragons and Clash of Clans and obviously are looking ways to extend that partnership. And, and, uh, so from that perspective, nothing has changed. So if, if, if anything has changed, it, it, it's more like now we feel that we have like the, the time, and it's, uh, this deal just gives us more time to like do what we want to do. Yeah, no, that, that's great. Yeah, but um, on the other hand, uh, so we, we we love the very fun thing, exciting new things, and also Iruka and others, uh, Supercell teams, always looking for the fun excitement. Uh, the, so. So we are, we are talking very uh, frequently, and uh, we got excited to hear the new idea, and we are very happy to share s each other. Mm. So, uh, so far, uh, I'm so uh, happy to, so, uh, of course, uh, we can't share the latest strategy or new projects so far, but we are talking so many exciting things with them. Yeah, and we, we look forward to seeing what, what comes yeah. out. Um, can you, one of the things that I think is fascinating about the deal is that even though you are two independent companies, in some ways you now represent a global powerhouse in that there is no other game company that is as global as this friendship, these two companies, if you like, together. Um, how do you think about global? We, just, we heard uh, Peter just now talk about uh, you know, Angry Birds and, and China. How do you think about global games and being successful Globally, because clearly both companies have come at the global market from different places and are now sort of collaborating around that. Right. So one of the things or, or the dreams that we have is that we are trying to build uh, a kind of truly global games games company. And uh, you know, for us, like our approach has has been that when we go to markets like say Japan or China, for example, it's really important for us that the game brand stays intact. It, it is not changed, and, and we, we do not want to change the soul of the game. Uh, so, so, we, so it's the same game, it's the same characters, the same, same brand, but then we, we try to do as good job as possible in sort of localizing the, the kind of text, and, and we get local partners uh, to promote the game, we get local teams to give support to the players and so forth. But for us, like our view is that we, we really want to create these like truly global game brands, and and in in my opinion, you it's it's kind of difficult to compete in in those local markets by trying to be more local than the local players. It really doesn't make much sense. So therefore, our view is that you know the the soul of the game must not change, and it's it's the same game for for everyone. Um, some people say that uh, the the tastes. Between, uh, is the, the, for example, the taste uh, which, I, which are liked by the Asian people is different from the Western people, for, for example, or, or it is really hard uh, to enter into f uh, the Western market from Asian's point of view or vice versa. But I don't think so. Um, if we focus, so all we have to do is just focus in a good game nice game uh, to play fun. Um, so that is the thing uh, we should focus. So that then if we could make a great, very exciting game, then uh, the, it will become a global mm. in the end. Yeah, it, it's, it's a really interesting perspective, I find, because uh, iOS and Android as, as operating systems have really globalized the game market in a way that it never used to be global before. So you can actually address the whole world with a, with a, with, with a single product. Do you think, though, that if you... I know that neither of you wants to talk about, or likes to talk about future game plans, but do you, do you think that more games will be made, um, if you like, that are focused on trying to take over the whole world as opposed to games which are for specifically individual markets? And, I don't know, uh, Taizo, if, if you can talk about how Gung Ho thinks about game development. Do you try to make global games or do you try to make games for a more local market that then you take global if they are successful? Um, uh, one of our beauty uh, is that creating that very unique original game. So we like to always looking for the 
the way how way the new new games, um, which is not uh, existing so far. Um, so that is our uh, most important thing. So um, the new means uh, a lot, right? The, uh, so, uh, for example, uh, in, in my personal uh, opinion, uh, not only the smartphone or you know, tablets, but also the many uh, wearable devices, for example. So many gadgets will come, so it, which is totally connected to the mobile network. Then we might be able to create a new fun experience mm -hmm. using that kind of new devices, yeah. for example. And if we find a, a good way to to entertain uh, the people using that kind of new features, then we will we will definitely create something. So uh, of course, uh, the main battlefield will be the uh, smartphone or tablets. But on the other hand, we're always looking for some new innovative gaming experience. And it, it was actually it was in incredible when I first played Puzzle and Dragons. I assumed that the mechanic existed. I assumed somebody else had invented it somewhere first, the, um, the, the actual matching mechanic of the, of the spheres. But the fact that you were able to create that, like really invent it from scratch and make it into a billion dollar plus franchise in such a short period, it speaks volumes of an incredible company. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's great to see. Is there anything on, on um, approach to, to games, Ilka, that you want to talk about? Or? No, I, I, I think like our, our approach is always to try to create these, these kind of global brands and it's, it's difficult, right? So, uh, so uh, and, uh, and often, often sign, we, oftentimes we don't succeed. So last year we, I think we killed four or five games at different type of phases and, and, and launched only two. So it's, it's, it really is difficult, but that's, but, but, that's but always goal. aiming, always aiming always for a aiming, global, yeah. global brand. You know, that's, that, that's interesting. So, so one thing that I think is interesting that we've, we moved from a market that does that where games, successful games, did tens of millions of dollars a few years ago to last year a successful game making hundreds of millions of dollars to this year the most successful games making a billion dollars plus in fact if you're looking at profits I would probably argue that that mobile games right now the mobile gaming franchises actually generate the most profit of all gaming franchises in the world right now which is just an incredible place still when you think about marketing and distribution actually mobile games and tablet games aren't nearly as visible in mass media and, and um, other forms of, of marketing sort of channels, if you like, today, at least in, you know, in the West. How do you view the future of distribution and marketing of mobile games? Do you see that as an important area? And, and clearly, to bake in another part of that question, uh, there's also been new players, in particular in, in Asia, play players like Line and Kakao and, and WeChat, that have kind of created these distribution layers for, for games. I guess, how do you see the future of marketing and distribution? Will it be the, just the app stores and will we see TV advertising of games? What, what, are, what are we going to see moving forward, do you think, given how rapidly the market is developing? Yeah, it's very difficult to answer because I can't predict the future. But um, in my view, uh, so as you said, uh, the messaging applications like a Line or a Kakao, uh, that those kind of messaging platform will be uh, the one of the platform for the uh, in gaming, uh, for the, uh, especially for the distribution wise. And but on the other hand, um, I think uh, the big franchise or big brands like a uh, Supercell title, Clash of Clans, or Angry Birds, or Pageant Dragons, uh, those kind of big title have a big fan and a big customer base. So uh, we can easily introduce those customers to the new games. So such kind of big title also uh, be a good, uh, good uh, platform, kind of platform uh, to, for distribution sake. Yeah. In, in, in our opinion, the, the most important form of marketing, it, it, it still is the good old word of mouth. I mean, I mean, the great thing about the mobile games is that you know, people actually do talk about them to each other and they, they do give, give recommendations. So that's by far the, 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 the best marketing tactic is, is just to like, create a great game that people, mm. people would talk about. But you know, having, having said that, I, 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 I do think that uh, like next year, and we'll, we'll see more and more kind of above the line of marketing, and, and, and you, you'll see more TV advertisements on mobile games and so on. It's, it's, I, I think that's pretty clear. Okay. And is there, anything, is there anything on the roadmap when you think about gaming hardware 
over, you know, in general that affects the kind of games that we will see in the future. Like if you are a startup out there today, clearly a few years ago it was pretty exciting to say that tablets will be a, you know, a primary gaming device and there will be a big market. Um, that market is sort of here today. Is there a similar prediction or thought about the future in terms of gaming on wearables or gaming on, I don't know, virtual reality glasses or anything like that that you think is significant? Or is the, is the device base going to be sort of more stabilized over the next five to ten years, do you think? Well, uh, like from our perspective, we think that it's still like so, so early days for mobile and tablet gaming that uh, we, I mean, we, we believe that we are still sort of just scratching the surface like when it comes to like, like uh, what kinds of games can you actually play on these devices that have a great screens and the touch screen UI and so on. And, and then I think one area where you'll see a lot more innovation like next year is, uh, is just the social mechanics. So I, I personally think that I, like a, there's like so much more innovation that can be done on those fronts. So we, we try to focus like how can we actually make better and more social games on this platform yeah. rather than thinking about like a, other types of hardware. Yeah, so, so basically it's so more innovation on software and sort of design elements around social than necessarily on the hardware. Right. So perhaps the hardware is, is more stable. Is that? Yeah. That? Um, as you know, the, the smartphone uh, keep on improving. Uh, performance-wise or power-wise. So, for example, uh, the, uh, the, the NVIDIA's mobile chipset, uh, Tegra 5, will come. And Tegra 5 with CPU power, GPU power is amazing. Uh, it's much faster than the normal PC or uh, MacBook Air and so on. And also, the Qualcomm is now preparing the Snapdragon, uh, which is also another uh, very high-quality graphic chipset. So uh, the, I think, uh, I believe, within a five, or five years or so, uh, the, the mobile phone, smartphone, has over one terabyte storage. And also, the network speed will be the over 100 megabit per second. Or some, some network mobile carrier will provide a one gigabit uh, network uh, through the LTE. And also the CPU power, graphic power is much, much faster than the, much better than the Xbox One or PlayStation 4 and so on. So all we have to do uh, from, from consumer's perspective, all we have to do is just bring this smartphone, amazing CPU computer, supercomputer. And uh, if I sit on a living uh, and if I turn on a TV, it TV will be the just a display, and if you go to the office, the, there is a kind of the display, uh, and the, the, that, this one is a PC. There is no PC at all in the office. So, and if we go to the arcade, or if we go to the theme park, or if we uh, go to the theater, the, this affects to the devices uh, or instruments uh, there, the place and space. So. Um, I think we can create a very innovative uh, gaming experience in the future. So, um, so that's why um, uh, the mobile gaming uh, history has just begun. So, so much uh, place, places, uh, spaces to innovate something. Wow, no, that's an ex exciting vision. So, so last thing, you're both incredibly successful in games, but also both very successful and experienced entrepreneurs. And Slush is ultimately all about celebrating entrepreneurship. So what, are, what would be your sort of, if there was one piece of advice that you could give, and I'm sure entrepreneurs ask this of you all the time, but if there was one piece of advice, looking at where the market is right now, where you are right now, where, you know, where things are heading toward in general, is there a specific piece of sage advice that you would want to give entrepreneurs out there, either in games or in, 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 in general, based on all your vast successes and experience? I would say that I create something different. I mean, don't look what sells today. Don't go to the top grossing chart on iOS and look at, OK, what are the top three games? And then they make kind of copies, copies of those. Uh, you know, and there's like so much more innovation that can be done on this space. As I said, it's so, so early. There's so many different types of gameplay mechanics that you can invent on this platform. So try to create something like new and exciting and, and, uh, and, and then just uh, build a great product. Innovate. Always good advice. Um, I'd like to emphasize, firstly, is that thinking big. 
uh, so we like to change the world better, or uh, we like to create an innovative break breakthrough. So that kind of thinking big is very important for the entrepreneurs. And on the other hand, um, I'd like to add one more thing. Uh, never give up until uh, we make a success. <laughs> <laughs> then you can success. <laughs> you can make a success. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. That all right, we're cool. out of time. But thank you, both of you. Congratulations individually on all your successes, and congratulations on your deal. Let's give a big hand. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Kitos. Thank you.